Hello everyone, welcome to this MarkForge webinar on implementing print farms. My name is Daniel Young, I'm a content engineer here at MarkForge, and I'm joined by Marco Medecki, who's a marketing coordinator. Let's talk about what we're going to be talking about today. First, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to MarkForge about us, what we stand for, and how we think we make the world a better place. Then I'm going to examine the value of print farms as a concept, what makes them valuable and how you can compare them to CNC manufacturing. Then I'm going to give you a little case study of the MarkForge print farm in which we're going to use our farm as a way to dissect what makes a print farm valuable and how to make your print farms more valuable. And then last I'll take some questions on a variety of topics. So first, a little bit about MarkForged. We were founded out of MIT in 2013. Our headquarters are in Boston, Massachusetts, and we have 111 employees. These employees come from a wide variety of backgrounds, whether they be academic institutions like MIT or Olin College, uh, industry giants like Bell Laboratories, Sonos, Enernoc, Twilio, or Cisco Meraki, or many other backgrounds. We shipped our first printer in 2014. We've experienced 300% year-over-year growth in the past 12 months and we achieved profit profitability in Q1 of this year. We do this by printing the full range of materials, whether it be plastics, metals, or composites. We have a material spectrum that can cover a wide variety of applications, from tooling and fixtures to prototyping to end-use parts. We have a near global reach with over 3,000 machines in six continents. However, our network of resellers and local MarkForge representatives make sure that service is available anywhere you are on the planet. As a result, we're trusted by a lot of industry leaders. If a large company does manufacturing, they generally have one of our machines, whether if they be in automotive, aerospace, general manufacturing, consumer products, education, or electronics. This all comes down to our core point, which is empowering engineers to unlock the 10x, 10x innovation in design and manufacturing. We want to help you find fabrication methods that allow you to make your parts faster, more efficiently, and cheaper. All right. Now that we've introduced MarkForge a little bit, let's talk about why print farms. To start, I'm going to show you this build. This build is laid out in MarkForge printing software. It's four gripper jaws that we send out as sample parts. These sample parts are great because they show an end of arm tooling example to prospective customers. Each one takes about six hours to print, which means the group of four of them take 23 hours and 50 minutes combined. For assumption's sake, we'll round it up to a day and say this is a print job that takes about a day. Now, if I have one MarkForge printer, I can print this one job per day with one overseer and low job diversity. What I mean by that is it's going to take one person, maybe myself, to look over the printer, and I can only print one job over and over again if I'm trying to achieve some type of production volume. If I have five printers instead of one, it's still just me looking over them because they're pretty easy to use, but I can add four or five times as many jobs and I can add more job diversity. So if I wanted to print two or three different builds that took a day, um, I could print them and still have bandwidth to produce. If we take this even further and have 20 MarkForge printers, I can now print 20 jobs a day. Now I can print a large number of jobs, 80 per day, and I'm still the only overseer. The reasoning being, that these printers are very easy to oversee, they're not high maintenance machines, and now I can print high job diversity. I could print 10 machines of this, this print I just showed you, and on 10 machines another print, and that allows me to increase the diversity and overall range of my applications by which I'm using the farm. So really what it's about is increased efficiency. Now at its core, CNC machining is a process that requires a lot of oversight. For most machining operations, whether it be CNC milling, turning, or any other process, one person manages the operation of the machine at all times, which means that if you have a 24-hour machine, you need three different people working eight-hour shifts to manage it. In 3D printing, you need one person working in an eight-hour shift to manage 30 to 50 machines. 
The reason is that these machines are very reliable. Since they print autonomously, they can print overnight without another person looking over them. It's really just managing the workflow when they're not printing and making sure that the turnover is quick. And at its core, this boils down to this. More machines compensates for slow production time. So if I was trying to machine one of those gripper jaws in an hour that I just showed you, it might be faster to machine it on a CNC mill. But if I'm trying to print tw uh, 20 of them in a day, it's more effective to print them. And that's, at its core, what parallelization is. It's combining the efforts of many slower, low-maintenance machines in an effort to improve efficiency. Um, an added benefit is that it reduces risk as well. So an individual machine failure in a print farm means that you're uh, your bandwidth only goes down slightly, whereas if your machine fails overall in, your machining, in a machining capacity, that means that your machine is down until you fix it. And lastly, more machines compensate for that slow production time. So printing is admittedly not a fast process, but it's a process that's very low effort. And that means that one person can do the same amount of work on 30 machines that one person would do on one CNC machine. And when push comes to shove in terms of manufacturing efficiency, that's huge. So let's talk a little bit about parallelization at MarkForged. The scope of parallelization at MarkForged is pretty large. For those of you that don't know, we run a pretty large sample part operation, somewhere in the order of 10 to 15,000 parts per month printed and sent out to prospective customers. This helps us uh, communicate how valuable continuous fiber is, as well as give customers an ability to actually put their hands on a part before they purchase an expensive machine. To meet these goals, we run a really large print farm. And this print farm runs on this concept of parallelization, and we've boiled it down to three requirements. Dependability, efficiency, and visibility. So if you meet these three requirements, you're on the right road to success for a successful print farm. Now for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to cover each of these points and talk about how we work on it with our machines to implement solutions that are effective in this, in this vein. So first, dependability, arguably the most important of the three. Dependability hinges on reliable machines. There's no two ways to put it. In order for one technician to manage a lot of machines, running each machine individually must be trivial. So the amount of time it takes for you to work with one machine must not be just must not exceed one over n of the amount of time you have, and that's huge because uh, if I'm just one engineer managing a machine, I can maybe account for the fact that it occasionally fails or requires a lot of maintenance or whatever. But if I'm an opera a technician managing 35 to 40 machines, that's just not the case. So the printers mu must not just work; they must work with limited oversight. And that doesn't mean that we're not looking over the printers and maintenancing them, but they must, for the large part, work. And a machine with a reliability of below 90% on parts that it's printing is really infeasible in print farms. Uh, to get the level of, of assurance that you're going to produce the number of parts that you think you're going to produce, you really need a high level of reliability. Uh, one thing you can say about CNC machines is that they're generally very reliable, and once you get tolerances dialed in, it's a pretty sure thing that you're going to come out with a successful part. And that's something that you really need to replicate to some degree on these print farms. In terms of reliability, though, there are some ways that you can make machines more reliable and ensure that you have safety measures enacted in case something happens. So the first thing is that we only print tested and approved builds on our print farms, which means that we have other development printers that work in separate areas. And if we're going to implement a build on a print farm, we test those builds not only the parts, but the builds of the, that the parts comprise on these machines to make sure that they're reliable beforehand. Because we don't, the last thing we want to do is to push out a build that's less reliable. These machines are multi, uh, re-leveled multiple, usually two or three times per week. So uh, one great feature about our machines in general is that, that we have beds that kinetically reattach within 10 microns of accuracy. But as you print over and over again, things slowly sometimes become less level. And you, uh, to make sure that your prints are successful, you really want to make sure that you re-level these prints. And so that prevents any long-term drift or long-term uh, wear com contributing to level out of level. The last thing is that our wear components are checked periodically. Like any machine, um, our printers have components that wear on a regular basis. Um, and we want to make sure that we're tracking as they wear and that we know when we think they're going to run out of run out of juice long before they actually do. 
The last thing is making repairs trivial. So prints by themselves fail sometimes, uh, and that's that's a normal thing that happens, although we try to minimize that failure. Uh, printers themselves fail or break very, very occasionally, so much more rarely. In the event that they do fail, though, um, we've designed our machine so that the wear components are designed to be e easily replaceable, which means that our technicians downstairs who are working on these machines can identify whether or not it's a plastic nozzle or a fiber nozzle that's worn out or maybe some part of an extruder, make a quick fix and get that machine back online very quickly. Our technicians are equ effectively equipped to service our machines, which is very important. We don't want to make our machines hard to repair. Uh, we want them to be um, field instruments that can be fixed and then working again. So that's kind of the end of, of reliability. Now we're going to talk about efficiency. And for what it's worth, efficiency is probably the most important part of a print farm because you're trying to push every button as well as you can to make sure that your machine is working as best as possible. I like to liken the efficiency of a print farm as something similar to that of an airport. Uh, this is ironically is a redesign of LaGuardia Airport that's being treated as the gold standard for airport redesign. Um, it's very quick and its purpose is to get planes on the ground to their gates and serviced as quickly as possible so they can get back up in the air. And that's really a key in airports. The same is true with printers. They're both based on machines that have majority uptime and that print planes spend the vast majority of their lives in the air and printers spend the vast majority of their lives printing. Success is all about minimizing that down or transition time and quick changeover and streamlined processes are ex essential to the success of your overall project. Uh, you can only imagine that an airport that's very bad at changing out bags, for example, would be pretty slow as compared to an airport that's very good at it. Uh, just like that, a print farm where the materials are difficult to change out would not work as well as a print farm that was. So we split this into a few major categories. The first is physical machine organization. So this is an aisle of our print farm right here, and there's a few things you can notice about it. One, our printers are set in metal shelving racks in sets of four, and these sets of four are self-sufficient units, which means that the power, the maintenance machine tools, and the part collection bins are on that same rack, so that when someone's maintaining the machines or when they're removing parts from a build plate, they can very easily stay in their spot and just do it. And that's really big from a physical perspective because, again, of the efficiency of this process is making sure that the machines are down for as little time as possible. Next, we're going to talk about build management. So these, uh, these are here are all the builds that are currently approved to run on our machines. They're all located in a folder on our cloud software that our operators can very easily see. Um, so the builds are, again, laid out, tested, and approved before, used, uh, before being used to print on a print farm. Often we lay out the builds um, in specific numbers to set the time to as close as a day because if you set a 12-hour build and you started at midnight or it started at 12 p.m. noon, excuse me, uh, odds are pretty good that it's going to end at midnight and then your printer is going to be down from midnight to 7 a.m. until your technician comes in again. And so uh, we want to make sure that these builds are the correct time so that we can continue running them over and over and over again. Uh, approved builds are stored in an integrated project folder on the cloud, as I just mentioned, and that's really easily accessed and means that uh, it's not hard for someone to deduce whether or not a build is approved. It's, it's there. If it's there, it's ready to go. If it's not, don't print it on these machines. And having that simple, that simple interaction makes it a lot easier to start prints. The next thing is print queuing. So this is a, a photo of our printer's touchscreen, um, and it shows, it shows uh, prints that are in the queue. Um, and as you can see, these are our keychains here. So instead of sending our prints directly to printers, as we often do, these operators are sending them to print queues. And the difference is this. If you send it directly to the printer, the printer just starts printing. Uh, if you've taken the time to go prep the machine, that's great. Um, and if you have one machine that it's difficult to confuse about, that's also great. But since these operators are running 10, 15, 20 machines at cycles at a time, it's very hard for them to often figure out what machine they're maintaining and then go back to their computer and restart the build and kind of keep going over and over in that process. So instead what they do is in their, when they're free, when the machines are running, they send a bunch of scheduled prints to the, the print queues for each machine. And then as they're maintaining the machine, they have a easy, or as they're, as they're cycling the machine, they have a really simple cycle um, where they clean the machine up, they re-glue it, and then it's ready to go and they start it right from the queue on the touchscreen and they're done. And that assures a level of certainty and prevents error in a way that you can't necessarily do when you're starting it from the cloud. 
So as I just mentioned, re machine recycle is a really critical part of the process. So our machines get serviced in several printer batches as builds finished. Um, in these batches, they're usually batches of the same material or the same parts, whether they be keychains or uh, intakes or clamps or these any of these other wide variety of parts we print. Um, the parts are removed. The print systems and bed levels are checked as a cursory thing just to make sure everything is good. The material is checked and the bed is re-glued. We glue all of our beds to ensure that, um, that the material adheres well. The new build is started from the queue on the touch screen and, and it just goes. And on the right here you can see we keep physical whiteboards in the area um, with the printer locations, the names, and whether or not they're good or whether or not things are wearing out. And that way if there's a maintenance item required, uh, we can work with it at any given point in time. So uh, if there's a problem, it doesn't necessarily mean the printer is broken. It just means that something has been tracked at some period of time, and it's worth keeping an eye and monitoring it. So the last thing is visibility. Now, visibility is a little less, uh, less simple than the other two, but it's also equally important because you really need to understand in terms of strategizing about how you're operating a print farm, how your machines are actually doing. So we break it into two parts. One is in-print management. So in in-print management, the print farm is managed by the same cloud software that's used to slice the parts. It's our proprietary software, and it comes free with all of our machines. Um, and what that means is that you can see as this, uh, this is a screenshot of a drop-down menu where you can see all of, our, all of the printers here um, showing how far along they are in each build and what machines they are and what their printer name is. Um, so operators can check part progress, the material levels, what layer the print is on, and build histories on each machine. And so that's really useful because you can get as granular as you want, or you can look and see one machine's almost out of material, so I might need to pause and change that, that material before the print stops. And the next is output and job prioritization. So we keep stocks of all of our sample parts in order to send out beforehand, and the machine operators keep detailed records of print failures, successes, stocks, and part outputs. Um, and what this means is that we can then prioritize which build we want to run because we have 20 or 25 different builds based on the part stock level. So if we're running low on these intakes that are pictured on the right here, uh, we'll run an extra build of them, or if we're running low on keychains, then we'll do that, or if we're running low on these, uh, those, those end of arm tooling items that I showed at the beginning of the presentation, we can run more of those. It allows us a lot of flexibility in running the farm uh, and make sure that we're always keeping our print stocks up and that we're able to ever expand bandwidth as we free up more machines. So the result of this is 15,000 sample parts printed every month at a 94% success rate. And I know I rather deliberately said technicians and operators and all of these plural words to talk about how we ran our farm. Uh, that was a misdirect. We spend, we have one technician, his name is Walter and he's great and he operates all 38 of our machines um, and that's his job. And so when we say that one person can operate many, many machines, uh, we're proving it in our office every day. All right. Thank you very much for listening to this on-demand webinar presentation. If you'd like to learn more, please visit markforge.com or get in touch with a MarkForge representative. Have a nice day.